The produced water treatment system can be set up on the well pad with offloading tanks, process equipment trailers, and generator if required, above ground fresh water storage tank and clarified brine storage tanks. It can easily be relocated to minimize transportation costs in the field. Trucks hauling produced and flowback water offload, and the flowback water is processed with the produced water keeping processing more consistent. The first step in the process is the coalescing cyclone where dirty, oily water passes through eight cyclones, spinning the fluids to a high G-force. Lighter density oil is forced to the center of the rotating fluid where very small oil droplets collide and grow into large droplets, which separate much more efficiently in the pressurized oil water separator. Five-phase static separation is the next step where solids, water, rag layer, oil and gas are separated. This patent pending separator acts as an oil sludge catcher, oil dehydrator, solids trap and water deoiler while maintaining constant oil water interface position. Water from the pressurized separator goes next into the vacuum rotary electrocoagulation reactor or EC for short. This new patent applied for method of EC eliminates acid cleaning of the electrodes, consumes 100% of electrode material, and controls foaming and gases. In the EC process, suspended solids are attracted to the water with an electrical charge. The process water is flooded with electrons from direct current passing through the water which disrupts the charge, allowing the solids to break free from the water molecules. The sacrificial electrode material, which is like small rocks tumbling in a rock polisher, give off highly charged metal ions which act like powerful magnets to gather up the solids into clumps. As the EC reactor rotates, high current, low voltage electricity is transferred from the outside to the inside. The power is transferred from isolated transformers to high amperage electrical brushes, which in turn pass the power to copper rings and distribution electrical bus bars along the reactor vessel. The treated water exits the EC reactor through a stationary bearing and seal. The flow is then split to feed two vacuum clarifiers, which are large vessels the same size as the pressurized static separator. Inside the vacuum clarifiers, the solids are degassed and settled to the bottom for removal as concentrated solids, which are agitated and pumped out periodically. Sections of clear PVC pipe are placed so that dark, dirty water headed to the vacuum clarifiers can be compared to clean water exiting after clarification. A small amount of hydrogen and oxygen also exit from the vacuum clarifiers. The pure oxygen helps oxidize traces of dissolved chemicals and hydrocarbons. Progressive cavity pumps with variable frequency drives are used to not only transfer water but to also supply the required negative pressure vacuum in the EC and clarifiers. Peristaltic pumps have no wetted material parts and hold up very well to the high corrosion of oxygenated brine. When the hose inside the pump loses its flexibility, it can be quickly changed out, eliminating high-cost, time-consuming pump rebuilds. Solids slurry extracted from the separator and the vacuum clarifiers is pumped into the filter press feed tank to wait for filter press treatment. A high-efficiency screw vein compressor is used to charge the blow-down tanks used to empty water from the filter press prior to dumping the solids and to supply plant system air. The standard plate and frame filter press is used to consolidate the solids extracted from the process into a droplet cake for disposal. Solids are then disposed of at a local regulated landfill. The 100 GPM mobile treatment system is 100% automated and is operated remotely via web link by process engineers and is serviced weekly by a trained service technician. The next treatment step is to oxidize trace amounts of dissolved chemicals and hydrocarbons. This is done by introducing compressed air into the processed water and subjugating it to ultraviolet light, which creates high oxidation radicals, which reduce the dissolved pollutants to carbon dioxide. Multimedia filtration or ultrafiltration will capture the remaining fine solids that have passed through the clarifiers or are a residue from the oxidation process. The back flush from the filtration is sent back to the front of the system for reprocessing.
If the salinity levels of the wastewater to be treated are close to that of seawater, then reverse osmosis filtration can be used as a final step to recover fresh water and clarified concentrated brine. In most cases, 60% of the water can be recovered as fresh water and 40% brine. Proper maintenance of the equipment and periodic chemical cleaning of the RO membranes can extend the life of the membranes for economical water processing. The RO also has energy recovery to reduce pump costs. The final clean discharge water from the system is free of oils, solids, and has a very low salt content. Iron, boron, and other critical contaminants have been reduced, making it a premium product for critical fracking processes. Clean, clarified, concentrated brine can be reused or further concentrated to number 10 brine. Clean, fresh water is hauled or pumped away to points of use. Year-round recycling close to production can help maintain profit margins at today's oil prices by lowering transportation costs while reducing trucks on the highways and conserving our natural resources.